Hello, and welcome to Code in 5 Minutes with Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Code in 5 Minutes, we're going to see how do we can make a physics game in 5 minutes. So we'll drop into zimjazz.com, and we'll press on Code, and we'll scroll down a bit and hit Copy, and that copies the template. We'll come into an editor, such as Atom, and we'll paste. Well, Control-V then. <laughs> we paste. Now up above we have the JavaScript libraries that we're bringing in, CreateJS and Zim. We also need to bring in here uh, helper modules for the physics. So a helper module for the physics as well as the physics, physics engine itself. We're using Box2D. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, while we were in this code area here, the code part, we'll scroll on down until you arrive at libraries. And there's a sockets for multi-user, a game module, and here is the Zim 10 physics. Now just be careful, there's also an older physics, uh, but we want the Zim 10 physics. It's also stuff for 3JS and various uh, pizzazz backings and so forth paths. So we want the Zim 10 physics here. Probably the easiest way to get that code is click into the example and then right click over here and say view page source. Don't click on the image because it's an image. This whole canvas is an image and you won't get a view page source or control U will, will do it. Oh, not info. <laughs> view page source. There, we've done this before. And then just underneath where we've imported some uh, those other ones, we have the Box2D and Zim Physics Helper. So we'll grab those. Don't worry about the Zim 10 header that's for that other example. We'll come on back to our code and paste that in there. <laughs> Has this been five minutes already? <laughs> Are we cheating? <laughs> uh, we'll call it part of the template. So that's bringing in Box2D, our physics engine, and this is the helper module that makes Box2D like, oh, I don't know, 20 times easier to work with. So integrated physics now as well, and the documentation for the, the physics is all in the code. As a matter of fact, let me just show you that quickly. So back here, here we were on the physics thing. If we hit docs right there, it comes to our docs and then bumps you right into the physics. And you can see that there's lots of stuff here about how to use physics. In, in Zim right there. Also up at the top, by the way, here's the top of the docs. You've got the latest physics um, right, right there as well. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. That was uh, a bit of a setup there, but hopefully not too bad for you. And that gives us physics. We'll come on down into our code and where it says put your code here. We'll get rid of the circle. We're actually going to make a circle. That's a, I suppose what we'll try and make is a circle that we can move around with keyboard and it will bump into like a bunch of boxes and maybe change the color of the boxes, but all those are uh, physics based, so it'll bounce off them and there's all sorts of things that you can do from that, but we'll make that sort of simple game to start to see if we can turn on all of the, all of the boxes. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, so I think we're ready to start the timer. How about you? You want to see this five minutes go? Let's do it. So we're going to start the timer there. Um, we're going to use the follow, and what follow will do is it will follow around uh, an object, and we're going to follow a ball, but we're going to follow it in a world that is bigger than the stage. How much bigger? Well, how about const uh, size is equal to 5,000. That's 50,000. <laughs> that would be much bigger. Uh, as a matter of fact, you could make 50,000. But anyway, there's 5,000. And uh, then we're going to create a new physics world that will have that width. Uh, but the height will be the stage height. And although you could uh, adjust that as well. So const physics is equal to new physics. And this, this comes because we've imported the physics. Otherwise, this will give you an error. Uh, we'll set a zero gravity. Maybe we'll show you an upcoming five minutes with some gravity. But there's a zero gravity. And then these are the boundaries. New boundary. Uh, zero, comma, zero, comma. 
our size and the stage height like that. And follow we will set to true. So this last parameter here is the fact that we're going to be following along something in this size. And what are we going to be following? Well, we're going to be following a const circle is equal to a new circle. And we'll give it a size of 60 and a color of blue and whatever. And onto this, we will dot center it on the stage. Now let's we'll be doing a bunch of things here to this circle. We'll dot center it. We'll dot add physics like that. And there are properties in here that we can add as well, but maybe we'll come back to that if we have time. Dot add physics and we will follow it. This is the object that we will follow. So there's us telling, whoops, where we go, telling that we're going to follow it. We'll also control it, control. And you can set whether you want to control that in the X and Y and the speed that you want it to go and things like that as well. Uh, but we're going to just use the defaults for now. And then when we dot contact, well, uh, sure, when we dot contact, we're going to do some things. Uh, but maybe before we fill in the contact, why don't we um, why don't we make what we're going to be putting into context so that you sort of have it in context. We'll loop 50 times, <laughs> 650 times, and we'll call this arrow function each time, arrow function. And in the arrow function, we will make a new rectangle. Like that, uh, we can give it something 50-50 white. Um, we will dot center regis. Now that's kind of important, dot center reg, because all the physics objects are centered in the middle. They, they bounce from the middle of the things or, or count their dimensions from the middle. So if we don't center it, it would be off or center the registration, it would be off. And then we'll dot locate this. Uh, each one that we'll make will locate randomly across the size. So uh, rand size and then that's in the X and then rand stage height stage height that will be in the Y and we'll add physics to this too dot add physics otherwise the physics ball would not bump into it and we can choose to make this static or dynamic static means it will stay still it won't move and dynamic means the ball will bump into it and push it by default everything is dynamic but we will set this to false and that will be static and you can play with that too because maybe you want to move these things around there we go uh, and then when we contact we'll do something but for now i think we can try this out we'll right click and open in browser there's our circle. It's a little bit small. <laughs> because it's so small, it is very quick. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What do we do? A six? A six? Yeah, <laughs> so we want 60, not a, a six dimensions. Uh, you would have to make that much heavier for it. To, there we go. Okay, so there's our circle. And you can see that we're sort of moving around and bumping into these uh, things. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let's turn those dark when we hit them. And that will be under the contact. We will call uh, an arrow function that receives an object, obj. There's the arrow function. And we can just say obj dot color equals black. Now we should really only do that if it's a physics one. So how about if uh, obj dot type uh, double equals a rectangle. <laughs> Does that count? Let's just pause our timer there. Pause the timer. Oops, I think we went to 501. I swear, if we finish typing, that would work. We'll reload that as a browser crash. Or not a browser crash, an atom crash, uh, which doesn't usually happen. Here it comes back again. So uh, what do we get to there? Uh, if um, obj. Uh, I think we, I was typing something else there, dot type is double equal to rectangle, um, then we will say obj.color, obj.color equals black. All right, is that all right? We kind of <laughs> messed up for five minutes slightly, but I swear we got there. Okay.
Okay. So if the object's type is a rectangle, there are borders as well that we might bump into, and those borders are uh, uh, the just physics objects. They don't even have they don't have a color. They don't have they're invisible borders at the side. We might run into an error if we bump into the side and try and set its color when it doesn't have a color. Um, so what we're doing is we're checking to see if it's a rectangle, and that's handy for you to know how to do too. The, if we bring in the OBJ, this is the object that it contacts with. There is also what physics object it contacts with, uh, because what we're doing in Zim is we're mapping Zim objects on top of physics objects. So this would give you a reference to the Zim object, this would give you a reference to the physics object including the border. The border we didn't bother putting a Zim object on. We may in the future just for consistency. But the borders around the side of the of the um, stage or the boundaries uh, are only physics objects. So in other words, we'd be receiving null there if we contacted a border. And when we try to put the color on null, it would break. So here we are saying, hey, um, if the object's type is equal to a rectangle, we know it's one of the ones that we've made. Uh, this is just one way to do it, and there we are setting its color. Okay, so that setup would work, but if we really only want to collect one of those, the, uh, the Zim object, then we can do it more easily like that. Okay, let's test it out, though. A lot of talk, and we're not sure if it's going to work. Hopefully it will. So here we are, and we're trying to turn those things black when we hit them. Oh, yeah, look at that. Boink, ba -donk, ba -donk, donk. I can't get through there. How do I get through? I got through. Now, you see how it's zipping around uh, pretty fast? <laughs> what you can do is, uh, here, we'll show you. We'll go to here. Um, when we make the circle and add the physics, I mentioned that there were some properties that we can change, a bunch of properties we can change, and you can look at the docs. One, we could change the density of it. That's how heavy it is, and therefore it would the force wouldn't act as easily on it. So our arrows are applying forces to this physics object to move it about. And if it has a higher density, then it will be really heavy. And that would be good, too, if we wanted to, say, bulldoze all those little rectangles really easily. We could make this thing really dense and heavy and bump into it. The other thing, though, is linear, uh, linear, vol uh, not velocity, uh, linear damping. And if we set that to a higher number, uh, I think the default on linear damping is something like 0.5. Um, that's how easily it slides. So this is kind of cool. This will just slow it down a little bit. Um, it won't keep on sliding as much. It will, it's, it's like adding friction. We can add friction as well. Um, two things, but friction would be when it rubs against something. And right now the ball is just moving through the air for the most part. If we had a rectangle or a cube or a, sorry, a square um, sliding along the ground, then you would have uh, a friction it would make sense there as well, and you might want to even reduce the friction to nothing so that it slides easier. So it's physics. We've got all these uh, options. Uh, you can also say how much it's going to spin, but right now we're not really dealing with spin very much. Uh, the circle is actually spinning, but uh, you can't see it. If you wanted to, you could put something in it, and then you would see it spinning. But uh, there's so there's a radial um, uh, damping as well. I think that's angular, angular damping. Okay, there's also how bouncy it is. You can make these things really bouncy, and that's called restitution, and that relates to uh, more like bouncing balls and stuff like that. So let's try her out. We've made it heavier there with the damping, and we are the not the damping the yeah. See how quickly that stops now. Ah. So I let go, and as soon as I let go, basically it slows down uh, like that. That might be just a bit much. We'll drop that to a two. And let's see what it looks like pushing these things around. Remember we said that uh, we, when we added physics to the rectangle, we turned off whether it was dynamic or not. And by the way, that just happens to be the first parameter. So in up above here, you may have noticed we used the squiggly brackets. That was to jump to the linear parameter right away. Uh, the When we just said false, it turns out that whether it's dynamic or not is the first parameter, and that's dynamic colon uh, false. So we 
could do that as well if we wanted to, but we've set it to false. Uh, let's set it to true. Uh, by default, it is true, so we could just delete this whole thing and it would be the same. And now you can see, first of all, some of these boxes are actually tilted, and that's because they probably loaded on top of one another and they pushed each other away. So there we are now pushing these boxes around. And that could be kind of fun too. So isn't that neat? There's follow. We're following. We're going way the heck over here. That wasn't easy to do uh, to organize all of that stuff. For many years, uh, our physics that we had been doing were just in, in the size of the stage. But now we've uh, put in this system where it, it, it follows. And there's different ways that you can tweak this as well. One of the ways is to... Um, I don't know if you can tell, oh, uh, perhaps you see how it hits the end there, and that's it, hits the end, and now it follows. You can, I don't know if you notice, but as you're going, there's sort of this semi-abrupt stopping of the background. If you want, you can have this move so that um, what we've got here will move halfway into the screen, and then you sort of get this less abrupt background, and, and that might have been nice to, to see that. Uh, mind you, people might not quite understand what's going on, why you can't go any further. Uh, it helps, perhaps, to have a background image where you can see the background image moving as well. And as a matter of fact, maybe what we'll do is we'll introduce, uh, we'll do another um, what you can make in five minutes uh, with Zim. And in that one, perhaps we'll do something more along the lines of a side scroller where we're using physics to jump over things and hit things up in the air and where you've got gravity and uh, you know leading towards a, sort of a side scroller background and, and that kind of stuff. Does that sound good? So this has been a uh, code in five minutes with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract and if you enjoy what you're seeing here in these code in five minutes Please come on in to Zim and try it out. Uh, we're also available on a Slack forum at zimjs.com slash Slack. Have a great day. Ciao.